Hi, it's Lynn from Utopia Farms. Um, it's a windy day here today. Uh, the lambs left last night. They got on the trailer. He got here around 11.30 at night. We managed to get them all on in the dark. Um, and apparently they're home now. And uh, the guy's really happy with them. And the funny thing is the uh, trucker said to him, those are the best sheep I've ever seen. And he actually wants to buy some from us next year. So that was a good thing. Anyway, let's go on inside and see what today has in store for us. So yesterday I just couldn't stand it and I decided to trim off some of the wool from some of our keeper lambs to see what was underneath. This is one of the girls in the February group. She is from Handsome and she's got four dots. So she was a quad. Actually this one was a quad too and um, her sister is a quad. But because she's a quad she was also a bottle baby. So she's very friendly. She comes to see me every day and I'm gonna keep her and her sister um, and uh, yeah we managed to shear half of her off with handy scissors because I'm not uh, a 4-H person or a professional person and to me when the sheep are tame it's just as easy to cut them off with scissors so I got her half done she's looking very pretty but you can see how much wool there is on them, even uh, as a little lamb. But she's very, very pretty. Her si oh, here's her sister coming up to show herself off. Hi, you got half done too. I got halfway done on both of them and then uh, as I was cutting the back, it was really, really itchy. So they started twitching a bit. So I, <laughs> I didn't get to finish. And actually this one, she came right up on the box here and I didn't even need a trimming stand. Uh, she stood right up here while I while I did that. But uh, they're both really pretty use. And since we did send all of, well, not all of them, but a lot of twins on that last load, I thought, you know, we better uh, this time focus a little bit on multiples, just, uh, just so we have some. So, uh, these quads uh, are going to stay. Mind you, she's a single and this one's going to stay too. Also from Handsome. But she's not in the least bit friendly. But you guys are. They're all kind of mellowing out in here this morning. They've had their food and they're just relaxing. Oh, that's not monster, is it? Hi, Monst. Hi. How you doing? How you doing, Monster? Hi. Hi. You just taking a little siesta? You are very pretty. You are very, very pretty. Hi. You're pretty, too. I marked you as a keeper. Yeah, I did. You're from Snappy. So I was in the yard cleaning up Arnie's soybean bags that were blowing all over the place and I kept hearing this screaming you. Come on Max. So I came out to see what the problem was and I guess she must have been sleeping or something in here and everyone decided to go to the field and she doesn't know where everyone is. So we're going to give her a little help going to the field. Go on. Your buddies are all in the field. Oh, they're all out there. You're not alone. Sheep do not want to be alone. Come on. Oh, well, here's an old girl, but she was on the other side. So the two of them will go back to the field now. See how much more comfortable she is now that there's another one there. But 
but they still can't figure out that they're all in the pasture. Sometimes you just have to give sheep a little help. They're all back there, all wondering where you guys were. There they go. Okay, back, Ben. No more crying. They found their group. So that uh, little field that uh, Arnie was going to start last night, he did finish that today. And now he's on the next section, little by little, before the rain comes. And uh, the clouds are actually breaking up. So who knows, he may get a lot more done today before uh, the rain hits, which in my eyes is a bonus because the seeds will be planted and I'll get a watering. Like what could be better? So we'll go have a peek over at that field. And in the meantime, have a look at how the sheep are doing in the pasture here. Well, and they're like a plague. Look at what they, this is one thing about sheep. They come out to the pasture and they graze the first section that they come to, like right down, before they'll even attempt to go into the longer grass. And like you would think this was middle of summer the way they've grazed this down. Arnie won't like to see this because this he would uh, he would prefer to keep the sheep in confinement that way we have control over how they graze and uh, control over parasites and it keeps the pastures in better condition but they've grazed this right down I can see but now they're in the back corner where there's more grass but uh, what happens instead of each time they come out here them going back to that part at the back where they haven't touched yet they will make their way back there, but they'll hit this grazed off section first and they'll search for little succulent new grass shoots that have come up and they'll eat that first before they move on. And that's a problem for uh, pasture growth and regrowth. It's something you don't like. You want them to go right to the heavy pasture. So probably tomorrow when we let them out in this field, instead of just letting them go as they please, I'll bring the dogs and we'll chase them right to the back so that they don't stop in this front area. And uh, protect the pastures if we can. When you see dust coming from the cultivators or from the hay billers when you're billing hay, they say that's a good sign because it means the soil is dry, the hay is dry, it's ready to go. If there's no dust at all visible, it probably means it's too wet and you shouldn't be out there. Along the grasses in these corners where they haven't touched. Max, come here, Ben. the wind today so hopefully you can hear me because often when the wind's blowing it's uh, quite the feedback on the recording. They've all clustered up now because the dogs are here. We're at the other side of the field where there's plenty and plenty of grass. So this field he's in right now is actually uh, a big field. It's a 50 acre field. But I think his intention is only to do half of it today, but we'll see. And maybe we'll find out. Looks like he might be coming over to join us. Plastic all over the field. 
field. I don't know where that's come from. It looks like from people's garbage, which is really annoying. City people. So what's happening here? Are you doing the whole field or just part I'm of it? I'm going to do the whole field. Because I got a guess that we'll probably miss out on the rain. And then I'll be a half a day behind if I don't work it. So just keep going. Can't stop. It's going to take me another hour to finish this. How's that? Addicted to sheep. It is actually um, a video or a movie from the UK. Actually, it should be addicted to Lynn. Yeah. And who's that? I don't know. <laughs> That's I'm right. Get that in the way of yeah, how many ticks do you think I'm going to get on the way out? It is pretty sad when you take a walk in your country pastures and I got a whole pouch full of garbage that was on our field. They're like a horde of locusts. good thing about being out here is that that grass is getting them in good condition again. These guys aren't getting grain anymore. Instead of grain, they're getting grass. So it's always about uh, utilizing what's available at the time. In the winter, obviously, there's no grass in Canada. So that's when we supplement with the grain. After lambing, you can already see how quickly uh, they get back in condition again. Nobody looks uh, thin or needy. just dying for me to let them go chase those sheep but it's not a herding sheep day we want them out here grazing so I gotta keep them put stay where you are Ben Max lie down good boy so now they've turned uh, their backs to us but it, that's also a good opportunity to have a look and make sure that all this grass isn't causing them to get the runs from eating too much or from eating parasites. And so far, so good. It usually does, to be honest, take uh, about three weeks before you start noticing that for parasites and uh, from for lush grass, uh, we started them on dry hay before we let them out so you rarely get diarrhea if you start it that way it seems because they're not really gorging and now their uh, systems are used to it so um, any diarrhea now is probably going to be attributed to parasites but like I said they all look pretty good and you can see that too not seeing anything uh, to be concerned about here dogs are just born for sheep. Like I said, our border collies have never been trained. We don't really know how to do that. But they are from working bloodlines, um, really good working bloodlines. Uh, and it's inherited for sure. The dogs do basically everything we, we require of them and don't harm the sheep while they do it. And you can tell that our dogs um, aren't harassing the sheep because Max is now within 
two feet of that group of sheep there and they're they're calm they're still eating they're not stressed out by his presence he's um, being respectful but keeping his eye on him because that's what fascinates him some dogs will run in and charge and just just can't calm down around sheep It's nice to see uh, the instinct like that. We used to have livestock guardian dogs. Um, the last one died last summer and we haven't replaced them. Just because we feel we don't need a livestock guardian dog here. They were nice to have but I don't feel like they really added anything to our farm except for our week that we liked them. Um, but they were really neat to watch too. We had two, two brothers, and one would head out to the pasture ahead of the sheep. When we opened the gate, he would dart out way ahead of the sheep and run to the other end of the pasture. And then he'd do a loop of the fence line. And the other dog kind of wedged himself right in the middle of the flock. And the theory is that, um, the one is scope, scoping the pasture for predators to make sure they're going into a safe area. And the other one is hidden amongst the sheep so that any predators won't notice him there and think that maybe there's only one dog that they have to deal with when in fact there's two. And those guardian dogs, whereas border collies, it's extremely handy if you have a trained border collie, but um, Guardian dogs you don't want to train at all. You want them to have the instinct because most of the time they're going to be in the field with the sheep without you and you don't want them to have to rely on you for commands and what to do. You want them to do the right thing on their own. And yeah, they when they're working, they are fantastic dogs too. The reason we don't need them is our our sheep come in at night. We don't lamb in the fields. Our hedge wire fence um, encircles our entire farm and it's special sheep fencing and it is right to the ground. So it is very, very difficult for coyotes to come in here. And at night we have motion detectors. Like I say, they're inside. There's paddocks upon paddocks. I mean, it's a pretty secure place. And knock on wood, luckily we have never had a coyote loss. I did have a coyote loss in my past, um, like 20 years ago, and it was my fault because I forgot to close the back gate to the paddock when I put the sheep in for the night, and uh, a coyote came in and took one of our lambs. Ben, on the other hand, because I'll yell at Max to stop doing something. Ben will go out of his way to say, I'm a really good dog. Look at me, I'm right beside you. I'm listening to everything. He's a total, total suck. They're brothers and they're totally different. So that's why Ben is staying here in the field with me and Max is out with the sheep because Ben thinks that I want him to stay here and he doesn't want to do anything wrong. Now, if I told him to go out there, he would. But uh, right now, his main goal is to get human approval. Okay, Ben, are you, are you the biggest suck ever? Yes, you are. You are. And look at your brother. He's out hard at work. There's Max, still hard at work. He's just got them all in a line all gathered up in a row and he's going back and forth they're not too concerned but they're paying attention funny dog max what are you doing here max come on you're having fun aren't you are you a good boy he comes part way back doesn't want to come the whole way. Oh, now 
now they've made their way up to me. Hi, how you doing you guys? Hi, hi. See, even in the pasture you can, we can pet our sheep. Hi. Hi, you're really nice. Let's zoom it out a bit so we can get you in there. You're kind of close, it's hard to get you. Now you can hear what it's like to be around them when they're eating. Because now they're kind of surrounding me. Oh, Big Betty. Hi, sweetheart. I didn't see you there. Hi. Big Betty's a bee year, so you know she's uh, an older girl. Texel cross, with mainly Texel. And as I sit here, the storm clouds are coming in. And I swear I just heard thunder. So we may have to end the video with a quick stop if it starts to rain. And you watch these sheep if it does start to rain. You'd think that they would like the nice water on their backs, especially after being sheared and getting nice and clean. But uh, these guys will tear to the barn if it starts to rain, as if, uh, as if they're being tortured. These guys can't can't stand that Big Betty's getting attention. This is Radar here and Cammy in the middle. Not sure who you are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you funny girls. These are fair weather sheep. This is one guy I really like. He was a black ram, so I wanted to see if he was really black underneath, but he doesn't look too bad. So I've been chopping away at him. And there's Monster. See, I've been trimming him too. He's looking pretty nice. Well, the pastures are empty now. The sheep are all back in the barn. The storm is brewing. And we're going to call an end to today's episode. And... I hope you'll all join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Good night.